Golden Hill State Park. It's one of the smaller state parks in the area, but don't diminish it because of its size. It is a very nice little state park, very peaceful. It's right on Lake Ontario. And one of the nice draws to the state park that a lot of other ones don't have is a historic lighthouse. The lighthouse is over 150 years old. It is made out of uh, stone and brick. It is open for tours, and I'm not sure what days, if it's just on the weekends or during the week, we haven't noticed that yet. But it is open for tours, and we highly recommend that you go. They charge a dollar. So why not go for a dollar, right? Um, we are here for just a couple of days. I grew up in this area. My parents used to have a travel trailer, and they parked it at a campground just about a mile from here for the summer. And so I would come down here all the time. We would ride our bikes down here. We could see the lighthouse from where we camped on the lake. So it's, to me, this is a little bit of a homecoming. And it's kind of neat to come back here and see how much the campground has grown and changed over the years. So we're really enjoying our little bit of a stay here. Um, there's a lot of hiking in the woods around here. There's access to the lake for your boats or kayaks. There is a marina associated with the campground or the state park that you can launch a boat and enjoy the lake. Um, lake Ontario, if you've never been on Lake Ontario, is very different than a lot of lakes. Um, the Great Lakes are very large. They almost look like an ocean because you cannot see the other side of them. Uh, they are, I mean, Lake Ontario, I believe, is over 40 miles across. So that will give you an idea of the size of it. Uh, there are some boat traffic. You know, there's lake freighters and such that, that come across the lake that you can check out and watch while you're here. A lot of people just love to come here, put their lawn chairs along the bank of the lake and just watch the boats and the uh, water just kind of go by. It's very soothing. But we're, we're enjoying it. We're going to do some hiking today, probably maybe get the bikes out, take them for a ride, check out the area a little bit. So we got a lot of stuff in mind while we're here. We're going to try to make the most of this day that we've got here because we do leave tomorrow. Hopefully we can stay a little longer than the checkout time maybe park the trailer someplace, um, you know, off, off our site and spend a little bit more time during the day. We'll see. But for now, we've got a lot to do, and so we better get started. So this is our campsite. It's a little open, no shade, but most of the sites here are, do have some shade. This is where on the outer loop, kind of stuck on the edge of the baseball field, it looks like. You see there's where home plate would be. I guess these weren't always uh, campsites that were probably at one time part of the ballpark or whatever. But it's our site. It's fairly level. Gravel. And right over that way is the lake. The lighthouse is right over here, but I don't think you can see it because of the trees. The lighthouse should be right up there. We'll take a walk over there in a bit and check that out. But I think the bathhouse is over there, so close to that. So, looks like a pretty good spot. So, what are we doing? Today, this afternoon, we decided to take the dogs on a hike around, we're not quite sure where it's going, but we did find a path. See where this leads us. Chow's taking the lead.
So we have a new water container for the dogs for hiking. It has obviously a container and a jug at the bottom that you can put water in, but on the top it has a little bowl. And when you go and give the water a drink, the dog the water. When you go to give the dogs a drink, you just squeeze it and it fills full of water. They have the drink, and then whatever they don't drink just goes back in. And you can close it off. And you got a little clip. You clip it onto your belt. Easy to carry. Works good. Yeah. Highly recommended from Zephyr Travels and Zephyr herself and Monty. So which way? This way? Yeah. Or this way? I'm guessing this way. waiting outside the lighthouse, waiting for a tour. They're taking only groups of five. So we're the next group to go in. You've probably been in here before. I've never been in here before. Oh, you've never been in here? No. I grew up, like, right down the road from here. and never, never been in here. Well, when I was younger, they never had tours. The tours is something they've done in the last, well, maybe 20 years or whatever, but I've never, never done the tour. Oh, okay. So this is something new and something I've been looking forward to doing at some point. Good. Glad they're open. Yeah. It, it, it was built in 1875, and then when they found out that it was a lot of work, they built the back part of the house so he could have an assistant and his family, and they all lived here. Oh, wow. Because, you know, it's more than this lighthouse, because they had a farm to keep for their crops. They had animals, because there was no automobiles. And, wow. Yeah. And all of their supplies were shipped in. There was no roads, no grocery stores. <laughs> wow, wow, well, hey, you don't think about that. No. Was that just spoiled so you, Yeah, mm. so you were here, you were here. Yeah, yeah Parker was a long ways away. Yes. Really. Yeah. Now, is there, has this been restored at all? Or is this the condition it's always been kept at? I think it's the condition it's been painted, wow. but yeah, it's, it's been kept lovely. Yeah. And that's why you know you pay a dollar to get in just to have. Well, first of all, a girl. We since it's her weekend, we're in the red caps, so we just fill in for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. But you know, she she doesn't get money. She does it because she loves it. Right. But the money goes for little restorations and things to keep it open, and we get to see it. You have a whole list of the lighthouse keepers and their assistants and the years that they serve. Most of the time, the men would retire, so if you look at their dates, I think one of the last keepers that was here that raised his granddaughter, that she was raised here from a little girl, and she was probably born around in the 1920s. And she grew up here, so he had to retire, you know, at some kind of young age. This room is for the people, actually, as I knew the lady, she was a little granddaughter that grew up here. So her family and she, gave back all her baby pictures and they dedicated a room to her. Cool. Wow. Getting ready for the car you want to work out? <laughs> yeah, sure. Just stop in that room for a minute and look up. It's quite a it's quite a neat scene just oh, looking all so the way up there. Nice. Yeah, 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 People right. always take pictures of it. And from the top on the way down, it's a neat look down. Lots of times people have somebody stand down here and then take a picture from up there because you really get the perspective from the distance. Uh, how many times do you do this? Too many. <laughs> well, you don't have to go to the club. But at least they don't have to carry that five gallon of kerosene up here. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine doing that. And they did it for 10 years before they put electricity in. So well, it's now it's on the historic register, so everything has to be maintained pretty much the way it was. This is the last. It's steel line because the ships used to try and take the light out. They would fire on the lighthouse to take the light out. Just so that the other ships coming through wouldn't know that this is where the ship
told was... So... And I don't know whether it was the pilots. I can't really tell you what the reason was for it, but this is what the Fresno lens looked like. And it filled this whole area up above here. And then the kerosene was here. That's what they had to carry the five-gallon pails up and fill it. Light that at dusk every night, and it would burn all night long. And I don't know whether five gallons burned through the night. I don't know how, I don't know how often they had to refill it. But the light rotated, and every different lighthouse had a different sequence of flashes. So that's how they knew, that's how the ships knew where they were. Kind of a, really kind of a neat thing. And they could see that for 18 miles out into the lake. I couldn't imagine how a kerosene flame could be seen for 18 miles, but that, that special lens, the Fresno lens, just the prisms in the lens, I guess, however, mm -hmm. however it was, and, and it rotated, made the flash. And like I said, every different lighthouse had, had a different sequence of flashes, so the ship captains knew where they were by the however many flashes they were getting. View. There's almost always a breeze up here. Why are the flags that have mass? The pandemic. The COVID oh, oh, um, oh. victims. The Foghorn building next door, which is now the visitor center, but it's closed because of the pandemic. The big tower was when they decommissioned the lighthouse. Yep. The, they built that tower and they put an electric beacon up. Yeah, that's what, that's what we used to say. We'd come die here, you know, the boats and such. And we'd look at it and we'd say, you know, nobody liked that lighthouse. They always wanted to see this one work. Well, I guess it was, it was quite a thing in its day and quite a quite a time for the people that lived here that, that took care of it. I mean, it's yeah. like out in the middle of nowhere, you know. Yep. And everything came in pretty much by ship. That's where they stored the kerosene because they got a huge little kerosene. It's the farthest, it's the northernmost point of the southern shore of the lake, right, right along here. It's the widest part of the lake, it's 53 miles wide, and it's across from Toronto, I think it's 30 some miles yep. across. Take your time going down, don't rush. picture I was talking about from right, right at the top here. Yeah. It's a, it's a really a neat view from here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So, okay, it's recording. So our stay at Golden Hill State Park is almost over. Um, it was sunny and pretty warm earlier today, and then we had a rainstorm come through. But now, it's, well, it's still sprinkling a little bit, and yeah. it's cooled off quite a bit, but actually it feels good. Yeah, it's like it dropped from, like, being in the... What, 85 and a, or so down to about 65 mm -hmm. after the rain. And now we're just in a couple of sprinkles. And we have a rainbow, I think, right behind us, if we can get it. There it is. Right behind, right over our heads. Yep. Right there. And the lighthouse, of course, is right behind us there, too. Right. And there was a little bit of a second rainbow as well. Yep. Yeah, so it's enjoyed our little stay here. I'm glad we kind of carved out a couple of days in our schedule to stop down here, you know. Quite a good 
be nice if we could stay a couple more days doing a little more bike riding or more hiking and such, but mm -hmm. it was just a little bit of a taste and nice to get back here. Yeah, but I think this is one part we will come back again. Yeah, it is. It's definitely, it's a, it's a little um, underrated park or underlooked at park. Um, you know, it's, you wouldn't think of it right away, but it's really a nice little park. Uh, to kind of stop out. It doesn't have all the amenities that a lot of the bigger parks do, like swimming areas and such, but it's got you know, a little bit going for it, a little nice hiking area. It's kind of way out and away, out of the way and quiet. You got the, the lake right there behind us. Mm -hmm. So you have all that stuff. So it's enjoyable. Yep. Yeah, it's a nice park. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And if you enjoy this video, give us a thumbs up. It lets us know you care. And subscribe to our channel. That's right. And hit the bell for notifications so that you won't miss a video. We post videos every week, and we'd love to have you follow along on our adventures. Yes,